Hello and welcome to today's episode of The Drawing Board. My name is David Franklin and I'm your host and thank you so much for joining us for a 30-day YouTube Tesseract Dice campaign where for 30 days we're talking about the science behind our Tesseract Dice on Kickstarter. And today we're going to be continuing talking about some scientists talking about Sigmund Freud, the popular psychologist, and answering the question, what are defense mechanisms? Sigmund Freud is considered the father of modern psychology. However, a lot of his theories have been widely discredited as only partially true or not true at all. However, there are a lot of things that still hold some sort of value like defense mechanisms and his idea of the id, superego, and ego, and we're going to talk about that today. Now, all defense mechanisms have something to do with the id, superego, and ego, so we're going to start by talking about them. The id is the unconscious reservoir of the libido and the psychic energy that fuels instincts and the psychic process. It's rather selfish and pleasure-oriented, kind of like a kid, and has no ability to delay gratification. The superego contains internal societal idea of good. This is basically your moral beliefs that differentiate between good and bad and right and wrong. Now, both the id and the superego exist in your mind at the same time, and so does the ego. And all of them are sort of fighting and vying for attention and affecting the way that you think and feel. And the ego acts as a moderator between the pleasure-seeking id and the moral-seeking superego and seeks to find a compromise that pacifies both. And it can be viewed as the individual's sense of time and place. Now, Sigmund Freud thought that no one escaped childhood undamaged, basically that you would run into things that your mind didn't like or couldn't cope with, so it had these sort of defense mechanisms that would seek to pacify the id. The id is the child and doesn't like to feel bad, it doesn't like to feel less than, it doesn't like to feel hurt. So, defense mechanisms are a way of coping with these negative emotions. And we can start with repression. This is the first defense mechanism that Freud discovered and is arguably the most important. Repression is an unconscious action that the ego takes in order to keep terrible and horrible, disturbing things from becoming part of our conscious thought. They remain hidden underneath, so these thoughts get repressed or pushed down into the sea of our subconscious, remaining hidden, because if they came to the surface, if they became conscious thought, they would cause anxiety and all sorts of traumatic, horrible, physical, and mental effects. However, some of those effects still come to the surface because those memories and thoughts still do exist in our subconscious, gently influencing our feelings rather than allowing us to remember the events themselves. The next defense mechanism is called projection, basically saying, I don't like something about myself, so I'm gonna deny its existence and its truth about me, but I'm going to point it out and how much I hate it in other people. Displacement is another defense mechanism, which is the redirection of an impulse. Basically, a good example of this would be, let's say you're at work and a boss starts yelling at you. Well, you can't yell back at your boss or else he'd fire you, but in order to deal with that negative pent up emotion, you're gonna go home and yell at your children or your wife, something that you can yell at without being fired. I'm not saying this is right or okay, but it happens. The next defense mechanism is sublimation, which is similar to displacement, but takes place when we manage to displace our emotions into a more constructive thing. This might be artistic, we might be painting, or writing a song, or building a new contraption, or carving, or dancing, or something, to deal with our frustrations in a way that does not get us fired, and doesn't affect our wives and children like it would by yelling at them in displacement. Another defense mechanism, which is widely overused, is denial, but it is still a defense mechanism. Denial involves blocking some external events from awareness. Now, this isn't like repression, where they're pushed into the subconscious. Denial is more of the conscious and logical decision to ignore these thoughts and feelings. But it's not quite as conscious or as logical as you might think. It almost happens automatically because the alternative is so traumatic and so horrible to the individual. Another defense mechanism is regression, which is taking a step back psychologically and physiologically when faced with stress. For example, if we got horribly injured and ended up in a hospital, people have been known to wet their beds because they're so scared, they kind of step back into a childlike mentality, or they might start sucking their thumb or wanting a blanket or something like this. It's a Rather uncommon defense mechanism, but it's still something that Sigmund Freud theorized. And the last of the defense mechanisms is rationalization. Rationalization is the cognitive distortion of the facts, basically meaning that we're going to reconstruct 
our idea of reality so that it doesn't disagree with the things that happen. We often do this at a fairly conscious level and we provide ourselves with many excuses. Usually this comes from people with very, very hypersensitive egos making excuses so that they're never truly aware of it. It's sort of like lying to other people, but in a way that you actually believe your own lies. For instance, people who say, oh, I am not fat, I am just big boned. This is a form of rationalization to consciously and emotionally deal with the trauma of being overweight and unhealthy. And it's not just a lie they tell to other people so other people think about them differently. It's so that they can continue living their lives thinking the same thing and the same way about themselves because the alternative is too terrible. Like I said, a lot of Sigmund Freud's theories have been widely discredited like an Oedipus complex, but a lot of them, like defense mechanisms, exist in some form or another. And that's why Sigmund Freud is still considered the father of modern psychology. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of The Drawing Board. My name is David Franklin, I'm your host, and thank you so much for joining us for a 30-day Tesseract Dice YouTube campaign, where for 30 days we're talking about the science behind our Tesseract Dice on Kickstarter. And if you want to get a closer look at some of those dice, you can check out the link in the description below where you can check out our dice on our Kickstarter page. And if you just want to follow along with the science for the rest of the campaign, or even further afterwards, you can click that blue button in the corner right over there and subscribe to the channel. And we will see you tomorrow when we're going to be talking about basic physics. See you guys then.